Welcome everyone, Questine here with a discussion about Rogues for World of Warcraft Burning Crusade Classic. Now this is a topic I've covered before, but I did want to revisit in order to cover certain things I may have missed the first time around. Now when it comes to Rogues for Burning Crusade, they have issues, major issues in terms of rating, be it in tier 4 or in tier 5, but they do get better. And in fact, I would say that there is an enormous benefit for the vast majority of raiding teams in having a rogue as part of their core raid roster in tier 6 and in Sunwall Plateau. Now, that does mean you might have a person that's not going to raid all that much or you're not going to take for the serious progression in tier 4 and tier 5, but you would want to gear up all the same to bring in tier 6 because the benefits that they bring in tier 6 and in Sunwall Plateau are fairly significant. Now, this might not apply, might not apply to every single guild. The speedrunning guilds, they ha they'll likely have their own meta. They'll likely have their own unique rate setup, but we don't know how that's going to play out. They might have a balanced rate setup. They might have 9 Warlocks being the DPS or 9 12 Warlocks. We don't know how that's going to play out. We don't know how the trash is going to be. We need to see the tuning. We need to see the trash. We need to see the bosses. We need to see the damage values. We need to see if it's gonna, we're going to be able to AOE everything down or not. And dependent on that, you might see for speed running, uh, for speed running meta, very different raid setups. But for the vast majority of raiding guilds, you will benefit in having a rogue later on. For tier 6, for Sunwell Plateau. Why is that? Well, in Mount Hydral, they have Distract, and Distract is quite significant in Mount Hydral. Mount Hydral is an absolutely atrocious raid that you need to do because there's very important raid gear, especially from Archimond. But you have to deal with four horrible bosses that have about 20 to 30 minutes worth of trash, where if you wipe at any point there, you have to do the trash waves uh, the, for each boss, Again, so, hey, you wiped uh, on wave 8 on the first boss, you have to do everything again. Same with the uh, second boss, third boss, fourth boss, great stuff. So, every time you wipe, you're doing, you're spending 20 minutes dealing with trash. Wonderful. Ro a rogue really helps with this. Not necessarily with the trash waves, they're not going to help with that, but they're going to help with the bosses. Let's say you've had some horrible pulls, maybe some people have died, maybe they didn't die, but your healers are out of mana. And the boss is coming at the end of those trash waves. The boss is coming, your healers are um, a rogue can go and distract the boss. And even if you've done things well, even if you've done things quickly and efficiently, you might still have mana issues, people would very much welcome the time to recovery, to do positioning. And a rogue being able to distract the boss and give you those precious extra seconds is very useful to have as part of a raiding team. Very important uh, to have. It's not going to work every single time, but then when it does work, it is a pretty significant difference. And I would strongly recommend having a rogue in tier 6 just for this purpose. Forget anything else, just having a rogue to deal with this absolutely horrible raid is worth it on its, in its own right. Another thing is with Black Temple. In Black Temple, they have interrupts. Yes, interrupts. Not only kick, but because of their gladiator gloves, they have deadly throw, which becomes a second interrupt that they can use. What this means is that rogues have the best physical interrupts in the game if they're using these PvP gloves. Where does this matter? Well, Reliquary, you can benefit from having a rogue with these gloves on Reliquary of Souls, but that's not really the biggest... Uh, tangible benefit. It's on Eladari Council. Eladari Council has a priest boss. It's a council fight, multiple bosses. The priest boss has free spells, Spite, Holy Fire, and Circle of Healing. And you generally want to interrupt Holy Fire, and you especially want to interrupt uh, Circle of Healing. A single rogue can deal with all the physical interrupts required on this boss. Uh, on this boss. They can lock down the priest on their own for a good portion of the fight. Not for the entire fight, because here's the Here's the catch with Eladari Council and the issue that you might encounter. On Eladari Council, you also have the Paladin. The Paladin will uh, will alternate between Blessing of Protection and Blessing of Spell Warding. So it means you can't rely on just uh, physical interrupters or caster interrupts uh, to uh, deal with Circle of Healing, to deal with Holy Fire. And Holy Fire is quite a lot of damage and Circle of Healing, of course, is quite a lot of healing. You can't rely on 
either purely physical or caster interrupts. You need to have both. And I've personally seen on certain server that I've played how many guilds struggled on this boss with this issue because they went there without a rogue and they had issues, major problems because of that. Now, personally, as someone who was leading a guild, I made the point to have as part of my raiding team to have one good rogue that I bothered to gear, gave the ST, all that kind of stuff, all the bells and whistles, gave all the gear that they needed just to have an easier time on this boss and on Reliquary, and it made a fairly significant difference. Whereas many other guilds on the server that we were playing on struggled quite a bit, we did it in the same night we went to it. We didn't one-shot it, of course, but we had a much easier time than other people did. And this, uh, th the fact that we had a rogue played a role, a pretty big role in that, because a rogue can lock down the priest unless she's getting a blessing of protection from the paladin. And then for Sunwell Plateau, well, rogues have one major issue. Their damage initially is utterly shit. They won't do good damage. In pre-raid, be it tier, pre -raid, tier 4, even tier 5, their DPS is going to be pretty horrible. But then there are Warglaives, and a rogue with Warglaives can dish out quite a bit of damage. In fact, a rogue with tier 6 in general can do a good amount of damage. They don't necessarily need Warglaives. Warglaives are the things that put them over the top. Warglaives are the things that allow a rogue to go from a DPS or that might just be below the Hunters and the Warlocks to a DPS or that's competing with them on the damage meters. Rogues scale very well with gear, and because of the fact that there's haste, armor penetration, uh, in tier 6, in Zulaman gear, and in Sunwell Plateau gear especially, that benefits rogues uh, and physical DPSers in general. It's really with tier 6 and with Sunwell Plateau that physical DPSers end up being ahead, at least on bo bosses like, say, Brutalis, versus caster DPSers, where they end up being far, far ahead. Now, that this is not to say that rogues will top the damage meters. There's reasons they won't do so that they actually have nothing to do with their own personal DPS, but rather the fact that, rather the fact of bloodlust. See, you don't want to do bloodlust in every group. You want to put them in groups that are synergized, groups where you have like three DPSers, four DPSers that are all going to benefit from it. And a rogue typically won't be in such a group, may not be in such a group, like he might be with the tank, uh, for instance, a proud warrior, or he might be with a red paladin or some, some, someone along those lines that wouldn't benefit as much as, say, throwing a bloodlust in a warlock group or a hunter group. So rogues aren't necessarily going to top the damage meters, even with the gear, but that's more so of the way uh, bloodlust works and the way groups work uh, in Burning Crusade. Rogues will, especially with Warglaives, be capable of doing a good amount of damage and shouldn't be underestimated despite the many problems that they're going to have early on. And on top of that, they also have exposed armor, improved exposed armor. Now, improved exposed armor is worth about 4.5% physical DPS. This is more than an arms warrior. And a rogue is certainly capable of doing more damage than an arms warrior, especially with good gear. Not early on, but later on, they will beat the crap out of arms warriors in terms of DPS. Uh, and they provide a higher DPS benefit than an arms warrior does. Now, they don't have the shouts or uh, the battle shout, the demo shout, the commanding shout, or the thunderclap that an arms warrior can provide. So they, their only utility, really, uh, from a debuff uh, buff perspective is improved exposed armor, but it is more than what an arms warrior is capable of providing. Now, some people would say, like, with the improved exposed armor, well, you don't want to do it because your prow warrior is going to lose some threat. Even if that were true, and for the record, it really isn't, because while, yes, your prow warrior is going to lose out on the threat from Sunder, because that's what improved exposed armor is overwriting, while your prow warrior is going to lose out on that, he's going to do more damage on shield slam and he's gonna do more damage on heroic strike. But even if that were to be an issue, well, there's a reason why feral druids became the main tanks in Sunwell Plateau. <laughs> it wasn't just survivability, it was also threat concerns. So, you know, the age of the prow warrior compared to how things were on retail, well, it's coming to an end. Maybe not at the very start of TVC, but towards the end, absolutely so. I even if this was an issue, which I wanna make this very clear as someone who's played a warrior, 
it really isn't a problem compared to what you may read in some old threads on Elitist Jerks or anything like that. But anyway, rogues do offer DPS benefit and they can do quite a bit of damage if they have the gear, especially if they have the Warglaves. The Warglaves are ridiculous. They offer an enormous DPS increase to the person that's using them. A single Warglaive is a significant DPS increase. A set of Warglaives is a major DPS increase. You might go from a DPSer that never shows on the threat meter to one that's having to hold back because the tanks aren't capable of doing enough threat to, to keep up with you. It's that kind of situation with regards to, war, uh, to rogues with Warglaives. But first, you have to get to that point, and there is where we get into the issues that rogues have. The biggest issue is one old melee face in Burning Crusade, that there's many encounters from dungeons to raids in tier 4 and tier 5 that are not friendly towards melee at all. There's claves that might be 360 claves that could potentially one-shot people dependent on how Blizzard tunes things. There's whirlwinds, there's AoE. There's many abilities that trash and bosses have in dungeons, normal dungeons, heroic dungeons, and in raids from Karazhan to Tempest Keep that have a large number of abilities that screw over melee. Now, here's the thing. For many melee, you still bring them. You bring an enhanced shaman because you want the totems and the bloodlust. You you bring uh, an arms warrior because an arms warrior can do decent enough damage and provide 4% physical debuff. Uh, you bring a rep paladin for the judgment of wisdom. But you don't really have a benefit in bringing a rogue. The issue for rogues is similar in a way to what arms warriors have to deal with. If you're bringing someone because they're buffing your DPS by a certain percentage, 4% for Arms Warrior, 4.5% for Rogues, then they still need to do a certain amount of damage to, for that to be a net benefit for the raid. Now, here's the problem. Beyond the fact many encounters are unfriendly, the issue is Rogues can't do the damage early on. They scale very well with gear. They can do a lot of damage if they have the proper gearing, but... Until that particular stage, their damage is absolute shit. I'd say probably late tier 5 with the Kael'thas Mace and all that kind of stuff, rogues can do pretty decent damage. But until that stage, the rogues are going to do absolutely horrible DPS. And that is a major issue for them. Because the only benefit they bring beyond interrupts, and of course uh, the benefit in Mount Igel uh, with distraction, is improved exposed armor. But if they can't do the DPS, if hunters can do double their DPS, then it's not worth bringing a rogue. E even if theoretically, like the, the issue is, even if a, theoretically a melee might do DPS, practically they might not be able to do because of the encounter design, and rogues just won't be able to do the same damage as virtually anyone else. They are quite likely the lowest DPS, lowest damage dealer in the game at the start can become the, one of the highest but start out in the weakest position a big part of the problem here is related to gearing see other people casters or uh, physical dpsers have really powerful pre-raid gearing options be it drops or crafted items rogues don't really have those kind of options. Yes, you could potentially go blacksmithing and leatherworking and get some crafted items, but it's not going to be anywhere as powerful for USA, an arms warrior getting Lionheart uh, champion and an executioner, or a warlock getting spell strike and frozen shadow weave. It's not going to compare because the options aren't anywhere near as powerful. And the raid drops aren't that great. I mean, Spike Blade, Talon of Jara, or even Gladiator weapons you're not going to be able to do enough damage to justify your raid spot until you get towards the very end of tier 5. And that is a major issue. Because it creates a headache for raid leaders. Do you bring someone as part of your raid team that does become very good later on, but is pretty crap early on? Or do you not? Then that is a problem. That is the issue for rogues. Now, for my part, I think it's worth dealing with it, but you gotta understand that as a raid leader, as an officer, as a guild leader, just because you make a decision doesn't mean people will be happy with it. Many people will be unhappy if you bring a DPSer that's doing crap damage, giving him gear that other people likely want, uh, on the potential that he's, oh, he's going to do a lot of damage later on. But that's the situation with rogues. 
And I would say, and I would say finally, that you need a good rogue to be able to take advantage of what the class has to offer, to be able to eventually do the high level of DPS that rogues can provide to a raid and the utility that a rogue can provide to a raid. You need a good rogue, but that's like finding a unicorn in a forest. Occasionally you get lucky, but there's also many players in general that think they're the greatest thing in the world, and in reality they aren't. So take that however way you will. Costine here signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications, and stay tuned for more.